A while ago, I've shown you how you can create a UV map for geometry created with the curve to mesh node. And I said it's the best way. It isn't. Uh, while the stuff I've shown there is useful and the method is generally powerful, as I said, it was way too complicated for the task. I'm going to show you a much simpler way and uh, we're going to create what I call a better curve to mesh node that you can save and uh, use in your projects. Okay, let's see how it's done. So we have a guide curve and a profile curve. We're going to add geometry nodes to our guide curve. And we are going to bring the profile curve in here. Let's set up the curve to mesh. As of newer Blender versions, here you can control the thickness. Previously it was from the guide curve radius. Now it's this slider. Anyway, to create the UV map, we need two gradients, one going along the guide and another along the profile. These gradients we get from the spline parameter, the factor output. As a reminder, these are values going along the length of the curve that uh, start at zero and end in one. Now, this looks a bit weird. That's because these are not uh, poly curves. This one is a path curve and this one is a Bezier. We can make them poly by using a resample curve set to evaluate. Also, I will lower their resolutions just to have fewer faces, makes things a bit clearer. So, we capture this attribute on both of our curves using a capture attribute. Make sure it is set to the point domain. Then we combine these two into a vector using a combined XYZ node. And this is a very crude UV map. To illustrate the problems with it, let's add a material. Here I'll create a new texture to visualize our UV map. I like this one. And map it to the UV. Back in our geometry nodes, we need to set that material to our geometry. We don't see anything because we need to store this UV as an attribute. So store named attribute to the vector face corner and give it some name. And here we see the trouble region. The problem is the factor of our profile curve or any of the curves that are cyclic, meaning they are closed like this. Here we have a fuzzy gradient. Ideally, there should be a sharp transition here, a seam. We don't need to get to why this is happening. Watch my previous video if you want a full explanation. But if we look at the values, here it's uh, 0 0.9 or something, and it goes to zero. This face corner needs to have a value of one, so the maximum of our gradient. And on this side, it should be zero, which it is. We need to change this last row of face corners to have the value of one rather than zero. Now, anytime we need to make a change on a part of our mesh, we need to make a selection. If we can select it, then we can change it to anything. So the problem for us is, how do we make a selection of this last row of face corners? Well, check this out. If I use endpoint selection, one at both ends, and again capture it on the profile curve, so we can use it on the mesh, this selects both endpoints of our profile curve. This one is the start and this is the end. But if we evaluate this on the face domain, evaluate on domain, face, 
we get a selection of the last row of faces. Look at that. Now we just need to isolate these face corners. So if we use another endpoint selection, but select only the start on this one, we can combine these two masks with an ant node. Boolean math, ant. And this we evaluate on the face corner domain. And there we are. Now that we have a selection, let's use a switch node, set it to float. In the false, we plug our original gradient. In the true, we set it to 1. If we preview this on the face corner, there we are. Before, after. And then we use this gradient on the UV map. Now we have to do the same thing uh, for the guide curve, but instead of copying all this, we can just uh, group them and call this, I don't know, something like gradient for UV. And use this node on the guide curve as well. This makes it so, if we have a cyclic guide curve, there is also a sharp seam here as well. Ok, let's create the node asset. I'll group these nodes. Leave the curves and the set material on the outside. Ok, and let's give this node some catchy name. Also, I'd like to give it a geometry color scheme. There. We can output the UV map. And let's just drop an evaluate on face corner. Just to drive the point in. So we have an access to the UV from here as well. Now we can create some settings for the UV map. I'll make a new panel in our node group for them. Sometimes, when you import a material, it may expect a different ordering of the UV coordinates, meaning the texture might be horizontal rather than vertical, or vice versa. So, instead of changing the texture or the material, we can create a quick toggle to change the UV order. Copy the node where we combine the two gradients of the UV map and switch their order. Now, this is a reversed UV map. We can use a switch node to switch between these two and create an input for that. Also, let's have an input for the UV name. Now we should deal with the scaling. As I said, it used to be controlled by the radius of the guide curve. Now it isn't but we may still want to control the thickness from the viewport by changing the guide radius if we find that more useful. So right here, let's capture the radius of our guide curve and let's multiply it with the scale setting. There we are. I can scale with Alt S. Let's make this an option with a switch node and call this scale with radius. Next we should do the caps. When I fill the caps here, that UV is not very good. Ideally we should have a planar projection here, so uh, we have more control over the texture that's going to be on the caps. So let's first make a selection of the caps. On our guide, we can capture the endpoint selection and evaluate that on the face domain. Note that caps only exist on non-cyclic guide curves, so this right here is not a correct selection. We can screen for this by using 
an East spline cyclic node and a Boolean subtract node. Right, so we have only the actual caps selected. Now, usually the profile curve uh, needs to be oriented in the XY plane. That's how Blender takes it and sweeps it along the guide curve. We can use this to create the UV for our caps, because there essentially the profile curve just turned into a face at the ends of our guide. So if we capture the position of our profile curve, this could serve as the UV for the caps. In order to mix this with the rest of the UV map, we can use a switch node and use the caps selection for the mask. In the folds here, we can plug the UV map that we've already created. There we are. Now we need to process this a bit. For a start, the scaling is a bit off. Uh, let's first multiply our position. By multiplying it with zero on the Z axis, we essentially remove any Z component our profile curve might have. We basically project it on the XY plane. Then we can use a scale node and we can adjust the scaling. Now we want the size of this here to basically fit into a one by one square, right? That makes uh, more sense for a UV map. Right now it's the size of whatever our profile curve is. Basically we want to normalize the size of it. Hope that makes sense. Let's see. Grab a field minimum and maximum. Now, let me just explain here. If this is our profile curve, these two values are essentially, if we draw the bounding box of our profile curve, the minimum is this one and the maximum is this one. If we take the distance between them, that distance is the length of this vector. This is going to be our size. Let's call that uh, P. We want to multiply that by some scaling factor. And we want this to be equal to 1. So that scaling factor is going to be 1 over P. So let's divide here, 1 divided by this, our size, and this value is our scale. There we are. Now the texture is independent of the size of the profile curve. Previously, see how the texture slips underneath, kinda stays constant, after it moves with the profile and is also of a reasonable scale. Okay. Now, if I move our profile curve, see how the texture is shifting again as I move it. That's because this is dependent on where the curve is relative to its origin point. To account for this, let's take a field average the mean here is going to be like the center of this curve and in order to bring it back to the origin we need to subtract it from the position now as i move the texture is not shifting anymore now one last thing you can probably see here our texture is centered around the zero of the XY plane. It would be like the profile is right here. However, the UV plane is this one from 0, 0 to 1, 1. So we need to move the positions 0.5 in X and Y 
to center it on this patch. So let's do the add 0.5 in X and Y. And there we are. Now, a couple of useful things I'd like to have here is a way to scale and rotate the texture of the caps. Scaling is easy. We just multiply this here. That's the scale. As for the rotation, let's use a rotate vector. Axis angle to rotation. Rotate around the Z. And this is going to be our angle. So this is our scale. And this is our rotation. I'll make a new panel. Caps. In it, we'll have the few caps toggle. And these two guys. And finally, let's output the caps selection. Because we might need it somewhere. To finish the UV, let's have an option to pack the UV islands. Use a switch node between these two. Okay. Pack UV islands. And just make inputs for the packing settings. There is uh, one last feature I'd like to add. Sometimes when you create this curve to mesh, you find that the normals of the mesh are inverted. The reason for this is the direction in which our profile curve winds. It is called the winding direction. Think of it as uh, going clockwise or anti-clockwise. The profile curve. Now, of course, if you have that, you can use flip faces. But it's better if it is done automatically. To find the winding direction of the profile curve, we can deploy uh, Gauss's uh, signed area formula, also known as the shoelace formula, this thing right here. I'm using a slight variant here, namely this thing, without this uh, one half factor, because we are only interested in the sign. There is uh, nothing interesting here, it's just this formula built with nodes. You can pause and look at it. Okay, and now this will give us the incorrect winding direction. If I make another spline on our profile and uh, switch its direction, we can take a look. See how it selects the ones with the inverted normals. So uh, we can use this in the selection of the flip faces. And now we have a properly oriented mesh. Couple of things. We want to apply this only on cyclic profile curves. So let's demand here that uh, this selection is also on cyclic curves. Like so. And also, as usual, let's make a toggle for this. Make this into an option here with uh, another end node and this could be our fixed normals toggle and there we are you can clean up and organize this node tree a bit uh, then save this file and you can append this node group uh, whenever you need a curve to mesh with a uv map all right hope this was useful see you next time